Do you see this, guys? Like they have an entire flyer here for these events, selling homes that are in the West Bank. Again, these homes are not theirs to sell. The settlements that they have in the West Bank are also illegal according to international law. Now, there was one gentleman who tried to attend uh, one of the events in Canada, and he is not Jewish. And I want to show you just how quickly he was shut down. And this is how you know, again, it's not like they're trying to, they shouldn't be trying to sell those homes anyway, but it's not like they're trying to sell to everyone. A uh, censored man captured this. He said Jews in Canada were selling land in illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. A man refused to enter the synagogue because he wasn't Jewish, even though he had registered for the event. Check this out. This is private property. Actually, where are you from? from? I'm from here. Here, where do I park for this? I don't care. It's my here. It's a private property. I registered. Where do I park? This is all private property. Yo, I registered for the event. Where do I park? You can park up my house if you want. Where? Up my house. Why? I, I registered for the property. That's your problem. Now, there was actually a gentleman who actually stood up against this, uh, and he is, in fact, Jewish, and he had some things to say. I want to go ahead and get into that clip here. And by the way, this was shared by, please follow him, uh, the Muslim lawyer, real estate seminars in the U.S. and Canada selling West Bank settlement homes. So the gentleman that you're about to see on the video, his name is Rich Siegel. He's a Jewish resident of Teaneck, New Jersey. I, uh, my name is Rich Siegel. On March 10th, there is scheduled to be an Israeli real estate sales event. That event <laughs> violates both domestic law and international law. The man with the flag or whatever he had on his shoulders uh, there, he's got a point about private property and the need to respect private property. Now, if we would just apply that to the situation which was inspiring the man with the Palestine hat to do the thing, then we wouldn't have a problem in the first place. But it's a claim of private property and a denial of somebody else's right to private property and respect thereof that kind of is the whole crux of the problem, if you will. Um, <clears throat> Tony, do you have a quick comment on that before we go to the juicy Bill Maher? It's going to be like a ribeye steak, this next clip, so... Were you so the, clan, the clandestine nature of the meetings itself is quite absurd and shows that they, there must be at least some possibly, possibly shows some foreknowledge of the fact that they are indeed violating various both, can, at least in the Canadian example, human rights laws associated in Canada as well as international law. That is, you know, unfortunately not uh, depending on since... America and Canada are sort of crown colonies. Well, America wasn't, but then became one again. Uh, that's not surprising, but you know, just something to to point out that these are fundamentally illegal. Of course, jurisdiction comes with those who have leverage, and that goes to the Anglo-American side, I guess. Because that's how it's been when it comes to the colonial project, and has been for a couple hundred years now. But um, what I found most interesting, although Savvy Sabs did a phenomenal job, um, Greg Reese had one a week or two ago about this as well. Um, that was really good. I posted that, but we kind of got lost. But the same thing. Uh, what you've all know, Harari said, very fascinating. Um, he's been he's a polarizing figure because you and watch him on like. If Friedman, I quickly interject, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Just because, like the World Economic Forum, and you've all know a Harari, and. Uh, Gretchen, is that her name? The the global warming chick? Oh, God, what's, what's her, her name? name? Yeah, anyway, her up. Mm. it doesn't matter. But you know the chick, right? This, oh, yeah, like, I know. Uh, oh, yeah, I can global picture Global warming's it. killing us, right? All right. <laughs> She's pro power. Are you talking about Greta Thunberg? Yuval talking... is anti BB. Greta, yeah, Greta. Mm, Greta. Yeah. That's how much I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Greta all, supports yeah. Palestine. Yuval is against BB. Like it's interesting in this, like the whole lines of warfare shifted because of the 10 seven event. Like, you know, I can now hear Yuval Noah Harari as, you know, someone who's not a Klaus Schwab stooge because he's speaking on something different, right? Same thing with Greta Thunberg, same thing with a lot of people that I might disagree with on other topics. I can all of a sudden agree with them on these topics and it's, it's nice to yeah, be able to right. do that because I don't right. have to say, oh, they, you know, 
It's not team play. I'm not wearing a jersey. That's very well said. It's really, you know, what's interesting about it is when one when you ball was on Lex Friedman, sort of contradicts a lot of his positions um, at what at least he espouses at the World Economic Forum. So he's a polarizing figure for that reason. Sometimes I wonder if he's just saying this is the way the World Economic Forum is positioned. This is what it's going to be in the future. And this is the philosophy of what's going to be. But he's not, you know, we maybe we haven't got as much of a value judgment of him, meaning he's like evaluating and making a judgment on what he feels about it as much. I mean, I'm not, I'm not giving him justification here. I think the main line here is that one thing that's been consistent with those types is historians and philosophers associated with the World Economic Forum is that they are hardcore secularists, secularists, hardcore atheists, so much so that they're not even going to defend the Israel, even though that's the or Zionism in this case, um, which is sort of appropriates Judaism to use as cannon fodder for its mission for justification and rationalizations, but is itself a secular sort of uh, organization, a political fascist movement, right? That's really fundamentally what it is, seemingly. And so in that capacity, I'm not totally surprised. They're actually being consistent with the fact that, I mean, they, they, their world religion is essentially a world socialism, you know, sort of like, you know, with the possibility of moving to a world communism, that's their goal. But at least like their critique of religion is consistent enough that they can understand when it's being misappropriated in other theaters and other contexts where they actually are correct. Um, or have, you know, the evidence is weighted on their side instead of the speculation about a future humanity that they want to create in their image. Um, so both both are religious. It's just like at least they're critiquing the other religion instead of promoting their own religion. So I'll take that right now from them for what it's worth. I also have a hypothesis that I came up with while we were watching that clip because <clears throat> the gentleman from Teaneck, New Jersey, who has lived there for 25 years, who was a very vocal activist and well-spoken, has mm, a okay. name very similar to a filmmaker who, in Hoboken, New Jersey, not far away from Teaneck, he famously filmed a documentary called 9-11 Eyewitness. And Rick Siegel took a camera and pointed it at Ground Zero while all the events are going on. And then there's various analyses of events that happen. So I wonder if that is the same activist because uh oh, good observation. voice cadence, these sort of things. Yeah. Right. So here's wow. here's where T neck is. Wow. It's not that far from I would think the uh the footage was shot somewhere around Jersey City, Hoboken, right? That he shot. And if he now lives in T neck or used to live down here a little bit further south, I could see that as being the same guy. So just, you know, somebody's got fingers and they'll look that up and we'll find out at the next town hall.